Hello. Hello. Gave loud noises. How is everybody? How are you? Thank you, Ray. Long day at work. Well, I hope you're having a good time now. Sometimes work can suck, I understand. Okay, so today we are going to be doing digital stuff, but for the moment, until people trickle in, I'm just gonna poke at this. Um, however, I do need to do some pencil thumbnailing of the emojis I plan to create. <coughs> so, Gabe contributes a cup. <coughs> Still trying to finish this for New York next week, so I've been poking at it in the uh, off time. Weird? How do you mean? I am. Hey, Jaunty. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I've just been kind of poking at it. Um, I haven't had a nice chunk of time to actually finish them, so doing what I can. My only stipulation is to have him done. By New York, so I can sell him, so he can find his forever home. Hello, creaturist. Eliza, hi. Eliza wants to know what kind of paper is good for ink. Depends on what kind of ink you're using. But um, honestly, I would. Uh, where's Eliza? Is Eliza? She's, she's in, in the Philippines. Philippines yeah. oh. uh, I think Bristol board. If you can find some uh, Strathmore Bristol board, you usually do really well with that. I definitely wouldn't use anything that's too textured. Yeah. That's gonna really spider and make things weird. But if you uh, if you let me know what kind of paper you're using, uh, sorry, what kind of ink you're using, then I can probably help you with that. This sounds so down and underwater. I don't even know what would be causing that. Oh, I think homeboy's done. Is he? Do you yeah. want to open the window again? Yeah. Yeah. Too. Is anybody else having this music problem? And Emily, does do I sound underwater too, or is it just the music? I'm confused. Hopefully it's not for everybody. Do you mind if I, I scan something real quick? But what are you going to scan? Can't you I just guess. work on... Well, I could. Don't work on that. Work on this is, I, this needs to get out by Saturday. You have all day tomorrow. Okay. 
kind of watery. I have no idea why. Huh. So Eliza and Emily are hearing that issue. I try listening to it on my own. Yeah, Gabe will put on some headphones and listen. Oh, I'm blurry. So the sound's not blurry? Oh my god. <laughs> I'm so confused. No, open this all the way, Gabe. Okay. The whole thing all the way, because I am roasting in this. Like, I put it on because I knew it was uh, both of them. Oh. Push the Weird. Well, I hope it's better now. I don't know how else to fix it. I'll be completely honest. I have no idea. Okay, so you guys are familiar with the little sub shrub guy, yeah? So I'll give you a history of the sub shrub today, since we are kind of saying goodbye in our own way. That's weird. No music issues. Nothing's different. Unless... So my voice is okay though? Yeah, sub shop more. I want to make sure you guys can hear it though. Underwater. Sounds fine on the app. So on mobile it's okay? Try your computer though. So Gabe's testing on our end. He says it sounds okay. So if it sounds okay to us, that means it's your side. Yeah, and if Ray's okay. Yeah. Um, so the sub shrub. Gabe actually bought this for me as a present um, a long time ago, I think. Was it for my birthday or just for whatever? I think it was Christmas, actually. Maybe Christmas. Um, actually, it was Christmas last year. Right. And um, he knew I'd like it. But it's actually a Sanex character. You know Sanrio, the people that do Hello Kitty and stuff? He's a Sanex character, and he's actually not a shrub. He's, uh, if you look at their site, he's a weed. He's like, they just call him a weed. He's got an actual name. Um, I forgot what it is. It's kind of long. But uh, I just kind of adopted him into the stream one day, and he's become the sub, -sh sub shrub, but... I don't like that he's not mine. So I need to make a new thing and then eventually make an animation and stuff. What? Just, it sucks because you can hear that plane. <laughs> what? The, there's a plane outside and it's just, wow. it really picks it up. Oh, it's shit. so weird. Sorry um. guys. Oh, I'm sorry Emily. It was good to have you though. That's so weird. Hey Alex. I wonder if it's your internet then. I don't know. But it sounded okay? Yeah. yeah. Weird. Okay. Um, also, news. Viewers, I don't know how to explain the two sounds are different. I don't know, Creech. That's weird because, I mean, we tested it. Some of you guys are having an okay time. Oh, it's only other people? I don't know. It could be Twitch, too, just in some areas not being able to process correctly, too. I don't know. Honestly, I'm not doing anything different than usual, so I don't even know. That explains that. What? There's like um, the base of this thing is too bent. No, it's to like shave it down. Okay, so that was the history of the sub shop. Um, also at the bottom we have a new donation bar. However, I'm keeping as much as people have donated up to for the last special stream, which 
it's turned into this now, that special stream. I just thought it'd be good to, once we finally got an idea, you know, to put it down. Nightshade, this is your 12th one. Uh oh. Okay, sub shrub nub rubs. I don't know how I'm gonna do this in the future. <laughs> Congratulations on your year anniversary, Nightshade. Thank you so much for your patronage. Are you ready for your 12 seconds of nub ropes? <laughs> Make a wish. Okay, ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12. Let's do it. Right? You want to see Gabe is Elsa, right? And I don't even know any of the other characters, but I will order a random one, like... Oh, maybe you should be the guy. <laughs> no, I don't want to be one of the, like, people. Oh. There's, I think there's a snowman, there's a reindeer, and then someone told me there's trolls, but I haven't seen them. If I can find a random ugly costume, because I think Gabe is Elsa would be better, even though I'm an obvious choice, that's no fun. <laughs> He needs to be Elsa. So we'll get him like a little girl Elsa outfit and wig. He'll be Elsa. We're going to be sitting on a couch. You're not going to see the movie for copyright reasons, whatever. But you're just going to be watching us the entire time riff about the movie. And if you've seen our game streams, you kind of know how that works. There's a lot of swearing. There's a lot of insults going around. Maybe some sexual in you and those. Definitely. It'll be fun. Um, it's not PC. De well, it's know. Mac. I don't know what that means. Mac Daddy. When is it? Whenever we get funded. So, we'll figure that out. We'll have um, pizza. You won't, but we will. Yeah, we'll probably have pizza. We'll be talking and scarfing food. We're going to get Maybe Culver's. we'll have frozen theme <laughs> food. Mmm. <laughs> Glitter, thank you. You're welcome. Definitely. That was my pleasure. Um... If anything else about it's confusing, let me know. It's also a music genre that I enjoy to no end, so it seemed fitting. <laughs> oh, is May Fox here? Uh, not yet. Oh. Iceburgers. Yeah, we'll think of something stupid. <laughs> I'll have to look at a couple things, but we've never seen Frozen before. We're probably the last people on Earth, so I wanted to make a thing of it. And I'm sure I'm probably not going to like it, so that's even more fun. Mm -hmm. If I do like it, you'll see me kind of come to some conclusion about that. So... Either way, it could be fun. Oh, maybe um, we can watch that short, that really awful short that they had to pull from, uh, what was it? Uh, there was a short they had to pull? Why? Yeah, I forgot. Well, it's just they, they had a short and nobody wanted to see it. So people were showing oh, up to the... Oh, it was too long. Well, yeah, people were showing up late to the movie just so that they would miss it. Because uh -huh. it was like a 20-minute short or something. We're not missing much. So that's why you don't have to watch the movie, but you can watch us watch the movie, which may be better than watching the actual movie. So I thought that'd be fun. Maybe I'm stupid, but I thought it'd be funny. I was I was thinking, I don't know if I mentioned this, but like if we uh, drew stupid shit. Oh, we could draw like, I would allow this, frozen fan art <laughs> while we're doing it. If you guys, like we can have maybe two cameras or something. I, I'd have to figure out how we're going to do this. But we could oh. do frozen fan art while we're doing it and just yeah. draw stupid stuff. Um, I guess if it happens before the move, then we could just have it on here. We might have to go to half price and buy it. <laughs> yeah, we might have to actually purchase it. No. Well, that's what the donation's for. They're paying for go. us to buy it. There you go. And maybe we'll donate it after we're done to a child indeed. Yeah. <laughs> no no kid. And let that. it go. <laughs> Someone um, at a con once gave me a bracelet they made, and they were an adult male, and it was a frozen theme bracelet. And it said let it go on it, and I was very flattered. <laughs> But not only had I seen the movie, but I didn't want to wear it just in case. I was like, I'm not going to support something I haven't <laughs> seen or know nothing about. But, but. Sure, Creech. How much is the movie? I don't it's know. We could probably like, get it for like three bucks at half yeah. price. Like, it's not a big deal. If we end up, because we have to fund the bottom anyway. So whatever, we'll just do that. So whenever we get to the top, you know... What is that? He's packing up. Oh my god, I'm sorry if that's really loud for you. 
<laughs> so does this, Creech, does this mean it's not on my end? Is it, oh, so it could be a browser issue. Oh, that would make sense. Okay, so since I'm redesigning the sub shrub, and the fact he never really was a shrub, he was a weed. Spoiler alert. Um, so says the company that made him. We're gonna actually make him look like a shrub now. Oh, which could be so cute. He might even be better. Let's try to make him better. He could just have really cute, crazy hair. So before you do anything digitally, you know, same as always, do it, you know, do thumbnails and stuff. I kind of want to give him stick arms, but is that dumb? <laughs> oh my god. He has to emote somehow, right? Or maybe he's like a duck. Maybe his eyebrows that are leaves. Maybe. Um, let's see. Let's do purple. Chrome issue, apparently. Ah. Well, there you go. That's so weird. Usually chrome's good. And then reminding myself that this is going to be small. You never want to get really detailed with any emojis or any iconography because it is going to be shrunk down. So... Remember that. Oh, see, well, mouths. I hate that. So, usually you want to design things a lot chunkier and bigger. But what if we gave him buck teeth? No, oh, that wouldn't make sense. And then I wanted it to say something like, rub them nubs. Is that gross? Because <laughs> he needs nubs then. But this could be weird. <laughs> no, I could kind of, okay. Maybe I'll take cues from this one. Keep the, uh... Oh god, they're so dirty. The nubs are so dirty. Oh, thanks, Ray. Get weird! <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah, reaction ones are good. That's a good point. I figure if I have one that says something kind of... Uh, what would you call this? Su suggestive? <laughs> I don't know, it's kind of um, inappropriate, but it's too cute, so it's like you get this weird, like, is that what I think it's about? So, uh, probably both, Creech. So it's gonna be an emoji, so like Nightshade used a bunch of emojis there, because the emoji I have right now is just that one. And I'm gonna redesign that to be a character too. So, also, I don't know if... I'm caught between having a actual clover that's just kind of like melancholy, like the one I had there that's like, I don't care about anything, that sort of thing. Or having, you know, because it's a good luck thing too, so it's kind of funny. Or having one that's just a regular clover, three leaf, and having it just like... Whoa! Or something. I don't know. Either way, I don't like that mine's just this lifeless little icon. I wanted more character, so. Hey, Fire Seal! Oh, yeah, Creech, I'm not gonna. Yeah, I don't know about that. I might make a puppet of him later, but um, for now, this is the only physical one I have, and I wanna redesign it, and. I knew I wanted an emoji of him because he's become so canon for my persona on here, I feel. Um, but yeah, I don't know how to, how I want him to look yet. I know I should have done some character designs before coming on stream, but um, I didn't have time. Because I mean, Clover's just being good luck anyway, so I figure, oh hey. You know, if I could just have one that's like, good luck, and it's so happy. It looks like it's doing thumbs up, so I kind of like that. Ayy. But it doesn't look like the clover anymore. So anyway, always do thumbnails beforehand. I don't know 
know if I want his face up here or in here. I think in here. It looks like it's just wearing giant mittens. Oh god. Thank you for your uh, information, Preach. Um, I've been doing this sort of thing for over 10 years because I was in mobile games, so I'm not looking to do that yet, but because of the nature of emojis and iconography, you have to keep it simple anyway, so I, I mean, technically it's the same thing, so. A Gabo face? That's true, but Gabe should have it on his... Like, I would think if Gabe had an emoji, it would be on his uh, stream. Because on mine, it's kind of weird, because he's not always here. Like, right now, he's not here. I mean, he is here, but he's not on camera. So, like, when he's not... But, I mean, we could do something like this for his stream. I think he still needs one more. square. <laughs> but I already have one, Nightshade. This one ends in luck. Like, they go through this whole, I don't know, process, apparently, where it takes like three to five days. That's how long it took to just approve that. So, I'm guessing if they already approve that, I'll be okay. Because I'm just changing how it looks. I mean, it's still, you know, good luck, but in there. And then I wanted to do the B from Hazel's story. So those of you who've seen the B. Is that UPS? I keep hearing trucks. Big, yes. Are they yeah. coming here? Yes. You got a bear for me? Better have a bear for me. So I did want to do that one. Oh, really, Nightshade? Oh. Well, uh, maybe I can change the name to Clover. So it's just, what would it be? Clover Clover? <laughs> Clover One Clover? Good thing to point out, Nightshade. I didn't know it didn't let you then. Um, if I can rename it, I will. Clover. I almost want him to like have his nubs be pointing in like oh no Love them nubs. so if you guys use this anywhere they're gonna be like what the hell is that <laughs> I actually kind of digging this one that one and this what do you guys think about that this this and this I kind of like the proportions on the clover being different, too. Like, usually clover is like, everything's equal. I kind of like playing with those. Yes, all three? Cool! Let's do it. What'd you get? They're your books? Already? I thought they were supposed to come tomorrow. Before what? we leave. Before we leave. We should like give her a present or something. Oh, was that her? Yeah, she's always been really cool. I don't know when we're gonna see her next. Hey, May Fox is here. May Fox. Hey, May Fox. We'll just have oh, to order something. Oh shit! Now that May Fox is here, real quick before I switch over to my. Oops. Okay, back to this. So May Fox sent me this awesome thing. I hope it's okay to show it because it's amazing. I'm doing all three, Nightshade. Um, so I really like this card she made. This is adorable. I'll try not to show your messages because I know those can be embarrassing, but they're very heartfelt and we love them. Thank you so much. But she did a sweet fan art of me in the shrub and I love it. I want to cry about it. I love it so much. Seriously, this is this is what fan art is for you guys. 
it's for warming hearts and stuff. It's for being free and out of love. So thank you so much. Really, I love it. I love it so much. And it was like the best thing to get in the mail today. Because some days you have those days where it's just a little blah, and then you get something and it makes your day. This made my day. So thank you so much. Really, it means so much to me. Here we go. Here comes the Cintiq. <laughs> Here we go. Here comes the tears. Here we go. The water works. I try not to cry in camera anymore. The last time I did that was kind of muddy. <laughs> muddy. So, this is my Cintiq. Damn. It's old. It's ugly. <laughs> and it suffices. And no one needs a Cintiq. Really. I mean, you can get one. But you gotta earn it. I like Gabe's uh, reasoning. Gabe, you wanna go over that again? Uh, if you're... If you're not making as much, if you're not making five hundred dollars a month on your art, you probably don't need to have a Cintiq. You gotta earn it. Yeah. It has character. Well, thank you. Feel feel the difference. Was this a new one? Yeah. It still got some. Scouts. It's not that bad though, but I mean like. It's you, not as dark, but I do. Like the the feel of it, the color also is a lot richer, on yeah, the cover. Yeah. The cover's pretty good. Yeah. It's a little blurrier. Do you like the inside more? Oh, oh yeah. that's so much better. Yeah, it is. Yep. Nailed it. It's great. Uh, Gabe, put your stuff in the chat. BT dubs. Alright, display two. Well, I can write them uh, not skating in your video. Well, you shouldn't anyway. No, I'm not skating. They anymore. Yeah, they tried really hard. Oh, yeah, no, they did. Um, okay, so. In case any of y'all haven't seen. Real quick, I'm gonna let him talk. I put out a new book, a collection of obituaries of legends from uh, time before. From Take my time. This is a bunch of cool drawings of a bunch of cool dudes, and you can see the stuff on there. On the website. It's little obituaries. Okay, so, um, four icons, not the number four, but F-O-R, four icons, iconography, um, usually they ask for three different sizes. Now these sizes are for when it's using it on mobile, or lower res screens, or high res screens, retina stuff, so, um, it's 28, 56, and 112, okay? So these are the final ones I'm going to end up with. And they're pings so they can have transparent backgrounds, right? But when you make the actual document, you're going to want it to be a lot bigger. So yeah, 112 is the highest one you're going to export at, but usually you want to have it in a big format, also a power of two. So either 1024 I usually go with, or something else. You only need your resolution to be 72 because it's digital. The only time you need to up your res is when you're going to print, and usually that's over 300. Uh, 150 is a really low DPI to actually have any document set at for something that's going to be printed. Usually you want 300 or up. Um, and then color mode, obviously RGB because it is digital. So this is good for a starting uh, base file. And for emojis and stuff, you usually do want to have them be squares because it's just smarter. It accounts for a lot of different things that can happen while you're making stuff. Also, what I'm gonna do is Mac has this wonderful thing where I can actually do a screenshot of a section of a screen I select. So what I'm gonna do with that is I've got dark mode on my chat right now. So this is actually a swatch of the dark mode that I just copied from the screen itself, so it's accurate. Um, and then I'm also going to do the same for the light mode. So I have both technical uh, backgrounds that my emojis could be on. And that's to make sure they both look good on both modes. If there were more modes, you'd want to do the same thing um, for all the modes. So that's actually 
the background of the light chat, which isn't white. It's a very off-white, right? Uh-oh. Glitter said, Gabe, you know there's a misspelling of unknown on the Kilu page image? On the what? Kilu page image? Fuck. Oops. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Glitter. And this is why you do small print runs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that you didn't order a thousand of them with that. We only ordered 25 because this is his first run of it. So technically he's already got to do another run of it because we're getting orders for it. So you can fix it for that. But Gabe's not the best at quality assurance. The problem is that I also ran these, I did these in a doc, in a, in a word doc, and I ran spell check. And you think you would have caught it, but... Why wouldn't it catch it? I don't know. Okay, so here's a very big point that you should listen to if you're ever going to do this. Okay? Oh, Fire Seal wants the typo. <laughs> I'm going to send you the real nasty typo. Yeah. No, don't give him that. Mm. Um, no, yeah, I will. You should go through a few of the books and write your own commentary, oh. like director's <laughs> commentary on your own fuck-ups. <laughs> I bet he'd like that. Um, okay, so pay attention. Pay attention. If I have to tell you anything during this entire stream, this is the most important thing I want you to take away. So I'm going to wait until you say ready. <laughs> Type ready, and I'll go. I'm going to drink my cider while you do it. I love cider. It's so good, dude. Do you know where the arm is? The cell phone arm? It's over there somewhere. Because remember it used to hold up the watering can? Yeah. Alright. Um, and that's very Gabe, you know, to go through his own stuff and actually make fun of himself. Which is part of the reasons I like him. Cider! Alright. Two are ready. So, pay attention. Photoshop has this thing where, and I always forget where it is. Um, if you go to window, arrange, new window for entitled, okay? This is super important. What this does, and it can be confusing, so you gotta make sure you're keeping your head on for this. Make a new window. What this is doing is actually making um, like an instance of your document that you can have at a small size the entire time you're making this. So it's not a duplicate because duplicates mean that it's a copy paste and then you can do different things to both of them. An instance means anything you do to the big document is going to be mirrored and reflected in the tiny one. Okay? So as an example, blah. See how that happens? So anything I do here is going to reflect here. So what this is good for is while you're working, you can actually double check like how it's looking. Every line you make when you're doing something smaller makes a huge difference. I don't know if some of you have ever done pixel art, but when you do pixel art, every pixel is detrimental. Like it can make or break the entire thing, okay? Um, so anytime you're doing something like this, very important. So, what I'm going to probably do, though, is I want these to have really nice lines. So I'll go back over that again later, too, just because. But for right now, I think I'm just going to... No, you know what? I'll do it. I'll do it now, too. Okay, so I've got both. Make sure one's small. And then once your document is basically set up, what's the smartest thing to do? Save! So make sure you save it before you move on to the next bit so you can easily do, you know, command S or whatever PC is, I've already forgotten. Um, so I'm gonna save it, all my stuff. Yep, so you can always have a visual. This was absolutely 100% important when I was doing game art. All the time for game art, you would use this. Seriously, all the time. Because for the longest time, 
Um, when I started my game art career, I was doing um, games for Blackberry. Okay, now I know some people have this love hate with Blackberry. As a person that developed for Blackberries, I hated it because Blackberry had about five to seven different screen sizes. So that meant way back then, before I could use Unity, I had to part out sometimes like three to five hundred images at different screen sizes. And it sucked. It was the bulk of my time. Eventually, um, you know, we switched and we went to Unity. We didn't have to develop for Blackberry or Windows Phone. <laughs> Windows Phone was like the worst phone in existence. Their marketplace was like, the, there was no QA. There was no one that was looking through the marketplace. Like it was a disaster. Okay, the marketplace had calendars of boobs. There was porn all over it. It was so badly moderated, so badly moderated. It was hilarious in a terrible way. Um, so I'm really glad that the company I worked for moved past those and started doing stuff for more iPhone and Android and everything, but. Hey, Sammy. Excellent, thank you. It still has that problem, Creech, um, once in a while. And it will, it's not a distortion so much as it is just a, uh, like the rendering as it renders the piece when you're zooming out or in, it doesn't fully render it correctly, so pixels can be off, it's not exactly, um, accurate, right? And people would freak out. I had friends that didn't understand that that's what was happening, so they'd be like, well, at 33% it looks like this, but I go up to 60 and it looks fine, so is it gonna print that way? And I'm like, no, 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 no. So, anyway, um, porn all over it. Yeah, it was crazy. Okay, so let me look at my sketches. And usually I would scan these in because I'd want to be, like, really on with them. But I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna sketch them in here. So you can see up here what that's gonna look like. I don't like doing my pencils digitally at full 100% black. I usually do them at gray or something else, um, but I'm actually going to do the text first. This is huge too. When you're doing text on emojis and stuff, I can't tell you how important it is that you know what you're doing with stroke, outer glow, drop shadows, anything that's doing that sort of thing um, and altering the text because at a small size, uh, when it's only 28 pixels square, it's going to you're gonna have to do different ones per size when you add text. So what usually you can do is, I've got this at 1024 right now, right? Power to big, big, big. Twice as big as it needs to be, um, if not more so. Um, but that's okay reducing most of the time. Um, down to the 28 pixels, then you gotta probably alter it a bit so it's a little bit more crisp. But when you're adding text, I'm actually going to probably have to go through each size and make sure that text reduces properly. And that's not going to even be involving this here. I'm probably going to have to be exporting different size files so that I can adjust the layer effects. And just so you guys know, because a lot of people don't know this either, when you're doing layer effects, let's say I've got a thing here, um, and actually let's actually make that what it is. Okay, let's say that's something. When you add layer effects to that, and Gabe didn't know this, so I, I'm kind of going off what Gabe doesn't know is kind of the public you don't know. <laughs> so let's say you add a bunch of effects to this, like some outer glow, stroke, um, all this sort of stuff, right? Even a drop shadow. Let's get crazy. Let's get nuts. Um, I guess the drop shadow is behind that. Okay. So let's say you've got all these things, right? When you actually shrink it down, those stay the same, right? And that might not be the effect you want, right? So pay attention to this, too. This is important. So if you keep getting frustrated, like, oh, all my things are scaling down with my thing. When you do it, and you click the transform box, 
and you hold ideally option and shift to keep it in the same spot and to uniformly reduce. If you look up in your menu bar up here, it's going to tell you the percent of reduction that you've gone down. So right now it's 25.47. So let's just round that to like 25. Okay. So right now I'm at 25 and I still have that problem where the scaled effects, they didn't scale down with the object, right? There is something you can do. You go to layer, you go to layer style and you do scale effects. Okay. This can be kind of a pain in the ass if you have a bunch of different layers that you group scaled together. So I made a keystroke for it, obviously here because I used to do it a lot with games. So if you do layer, layer style, scale effects, you open that up and it's going to give you a percentage. Now you know what percent to scale them down because you just took record of that, right? So you do 25 and look, that's what it should be. So that would be the appropriate amount scaled down. So for anybody that needed that, there you go. <laughs> so um, what was I going to do? Oh, I was going to do text. OK. So I'm going to actually do square text. I was going to have it contour to the top of the shrub, but for readability purposes, I'm going to keep it square. Rub them. I guess I could just say rub nubs. Rub them nubs. Yeah, we'll just go rub them nubs just for now. Here's another problem. Um, so serif fonts. For those of you who have never had a typography class, serif fonts are the fonts you have that have little Let's call them flags on, on the bits of the letters. So this is a serif, these are serifs, this is technically a serif, these are serifs. So like Times New Roman has serifs. Arial is a non-serif font or sans serif, which means without serifs, right? Sans, yeah. So if you got Arial here, usually this is going to read well at a small size. Usually, like sans serif fonts read better, more clear at a smaller size, as you can see here. Because when we learn letters, we learn them as shapes, right? And when those shapes reduce, if they're not blocky, if they've got all this decor and decorative parts to them, they're going to be harder to read. So I almost want to find, this is my usual font that I use for all my stuff. But I might forego that and get something that's more readable or actually like alter this font to look more bulky, okay? So that at a smaller size, it's actually read better. Like you can read this way better, right? Hi, Zep. How you doing? So sometimes you can just bold it and it'll be better, but other times not so much. And especially when you use um, these character attributes here that change the actual font without changing the font, these are Photoshop's way of dealing with certain things. When you use the bold, they call it a faux bold because they're not actually bolding the font at the vector level, okay? It's not actually part of the font set. It's not the bold that you would pick up here. So a lot of the time when you're altering things, it's going to actually yell at you if you can't do something and it'll say, you know, full bold is actually getting in the way of doing this thing. So that's something too. Um, rub a nub, nub. Ooh. <laughs> I could, I guess. I don't know. I'm still stuck on that. I'm just putting it here for placeholder right now anyway, but, um, I'll deal with it later with changing the actual font, but we're going to make this a little bit inappropriate. So remember to save periodically, obviously. Alright, so let's say we've got rub them nubs. Um, another thing you can do is this background layer, usually it's locked. When you make a new background, if you choose 
So you can actually start this early on. When you make a new background, or a new document just in, in general, you can have white, black, or background color. And then you can also change it here. And then when you start your document, it's gonna be that. But typically, always, you're gonna have a background color, right, this white, and it's usually gonna be locked. What I typically will do um, is unlock it by double clicking it and just changing it to layer zero and then using it for my rulers so that the rulers can snap then. See how it snaps? So I know where the center of everything is. And then I can also select it and select my text and actually center them that way. So now if you look, they're centered in the document, right? And then you can always relock it again so you don't accidentally touch it, but it's good to do that because then you know where the absolute center of your document always is. Rub a dub dub, it's Mr. Subshop. Hey, mate. Save like a scrub. Not just Comic Sans, Papyrus. And now, the new favorite, Bleeding Cowboy. Go type in Bleeding Cowboy font in Google. It's on every country album ever. I guarantee you'll recognize it. It's the new terrible font. First it was Comic Sans, then it was Papyrus, now it's Bleeding Cowboy. Sorry, not sorry. It's on, I think, all them Affliction shirts too, isn't it? Yeah. Oh god. Can't believe that's still around. <laughs> Ray's like, no! <laughs> okay. So now that I have the text there, I can work around it, right? So if I want the shrub to kind of be in front of the text on the top and then behind it at the bottom, I totally could, which I might do. Um, so I'm kind of crazy about where to place things. So that's gonna be my shrub, shrub nubbery, let's say. Seeing papyrus in any professional work makes me understand what crunch. There you go. It's nightmare fuel. Yeah, it's the worst. You're gonna go to like Walmart now and Target and you're gonna look at the shirts and be like, okay. Okay. And it was even at um what store were we in? It wasn't Zoomies. Was it Pac Sun? Oh my god, what store was it? I think it might have been Pac Sun. I don't think we went to any other it might have been in Buckle. Cause that's, it was Buckle. Yeah, it was Buckle. Yeah. So we went into the Buckle. <laughs> and they had it on a bunch of shirts, too. It's like, really? Come on, guys. Come on. Hat Stop? Oh, no. Is it there, too? Hat oh, Stop? God. That's awful. So I'm going to actually <laughs> do something a little bit cuter, I think, with the shrub. Since now I have full control of the shrub, I might give him like these cute little bunny ears using the leaves, right? And then just have his regular leaves kind of coming off, right? Maybe a leaf here. And later on they can read as leaves. But I think it's important to kind of give character. So, you know, since I have so much freedom now with it, you know, um, I can turn that into stuff. And then his hands we can make like little leaf mittens right those those can be his nubs and you can basically have look at this eager shrub so eager and then if i were going to put in his feet which are sticks i'd do this but you're not going to be able to see them so at the small size over here you can see how it's reducing so also, there's a problem there with covering up the B. So this is where readability becomes important. And I would almost sacrifice having him come down a bit more. Because you don't want the B to look like an R. Yeah. I could do that. And then to actually kind of see how the text gets covered up, I can add a mask on it. So I don't actually hurt the text, I can get rid of parts of it and see what it would look like without it so I can't actually read it. 
Which, that looks pretty readable at a small size. But there's some awkward touching going on down here. Mm -hmm. um, yes, it is called awkward touching. It has to do with tangents. So if you look up here, it looks okay, but this is why you have the reduction document open. And right here, with this bar of the H, the middle piece of the H, and then this leaf here, they're almost touching. And it's either overlap and go completely over it or go completely under it. If you get it too close, the shapes start to visually just blend together and the readability of the silhouettes of both the font and the actual image are gonna go way down. So that makes for a poor icon, okay? Hey, Wade! Oh, bye, Glitter, thanks for coming. Oh, great. Yeah, I mean, my graphic design course that I took, which was actually a, a typography class, because we had uh, animation stuff we were doing, um, they they would have hated it too. They hated Papyrus and Comic Sans when I was there, and Bleeding Cowboy came out post college for me, so they would have hated that too. My uh, one of my mentors is like the godfather of digital lettering for uh, for comics, and every convention that I attended with him had at least one person coming up and asking him to. Uh, like critique their lettering work. Oh no. And I can't imagine Richard saying yes to that. Yeah, so and he's he's from Wales, so he's got like a English accent, he's the, very the British snark. Yeah. And he's like What what are you doing? What is this? It's all wrong. No. No, no. 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 You see this? He and, always and, says that no. And no. it's there was one time where he's like, I've I've had enough. Okay, you could do it. Do it. Yeah. I, I've trained him, he can do it for you. Go ahead, do it. And I was like, oh, you gotta fix this and this and this and this and this. He's like, uh-huh, he's, he's right. It's like you didn't read my book. And oh, then he pulls no. out his book. Because oh, he, no. he made a very, very, very good lettering book. Like a comic lettering book. And he's like, D you need to buy this. If you haven't read this, buy this right now. Richard is also the guy that lettered the killing joke for yeah. anybody that knows Batman. He did all the bubbles and everything and all the dialogue and the killing joke. Teach him how to learn by actually reading. <laughs> the voice of God. <laughs> Globe. Okay, so I'm pretty pleased with this one. Um, so I'm gonna put this in its own little folder, okay? We'll come back to this one later. I'm gonna do the other two real quick. Um, so this is Subtrum. Rub the nubs. I almost want for the animation for him to be all seductive and be doing this. Like when people sub, he's like, you get 12. And it's, you know, and it's playing like this sexy music, but he's this fat shrub. Oh no. He's gross. Oh my god. That could be, like, the actual sexy part of my... Because there needs to be some... What's, what's the word I'm looking for? Risqueness? I don't know. Anyway. How dare you make me do stuff, Mage said. It's only if you want to. You're in charge of your destiny. Alright, and this one can be the B. B. And I'm going to go down here, and I'm going to actually... Steal my own damn font, because I can. And it's smart, because then you have consistency. Anytime you can reuse anything you've done, it's just smart, because that's consistent. This one is just gonna say, nice. I'll see you in a minute. So this is where that faux bold is actually fucking me over. See how gross it looks when it's really big? It makes it super chunky. So at that point, I'm gonna actually get rid of that. It's not a real bold, it's a faux bold. Like a kobold. <laughs> kobold. And it's gonna be a B. So the B is gonna be kind of difficult for me because I've only ever done him traditionally. 
I feel like. So to actually get how I, I like him, but digitally is gonna be kind of a test. So, oh, that's a really nice cut. Okay, so these aren't the final line arts, obviously, I'm gonna use. I'm gonna take it actually over in Eclipse Studio in a little bit. I'll make sure to stream that part too. So you can see how I'm actually gonna refine these. And so he's got all these hairs all over him, right? For those that know my bee. Okay, and always look down at this little one. And he's got the little, little thing there. Now I wanna draw his antenna, but at the same time, they might not reduce well. They look okay. Yeah, maybe I will. Might even caricature him a little bit to make him a little bit more cute, kind of like a chibi, you know, even though he's already small, fat, and whatever. So that is a good example. And then I wonder if I should overlap him here too. And then, some of you may not know this, now only use this if you know your way around Photoshop, because this can really screw you over. Um, so there's a difference between doing this in vector and doing this raster. Now if you're just doing something really quickly and kind of like I'm going to do to just preview it, if you look at my cursor, um, oh you can't really see it, well, here, maybe you kind of can, hold on, I'll move this over so you can see it. So if you look at my cursor, you see how when I'm over the T and I'm pressing command, now I don't remember the equivalent for command for PC, but when you do this, what it's doing is making it so if I click it now, it actually does a marquee around the text. So this is nice for then, like if I wanted to, um, like expand the selection. Let's say 20, how big is that? That's nice. All right, and then if I do a mask then, oh, invert. I can see what it would look like if I took out that part that's, you know, the bees at, and then I'll just do that and see. That could be kind of nice if he's almost somewhat of an ellipse and because you don't really need the whole thing especially with something as iconic as a bee if you just have the colors in the right spots people just know it's a bee right like if i just do this if i seriously just do this where is it come on go up there evelyn like that already makes you think of a bee right like it already makes you think of one. <laughs> it's just, when you have yellow, black, yellow, it just makes you think of a bee. Also, the color is way off. Hold on. Does this actually have filters on it? Oh my god. Okay, hold on. That looks so wrong. I gotta adjust this. This is not correct. so weird that it's so... Does it have a color it's pulling from? No. That's so weird. I can't turn it down either. Get rid of that. No, I guess I can't change it. Maybe it's only on my screen, actually. No, it's on there too. Well, I guess my Cintiq screen is actually a little bit different. Monitor settings can be a big can of worms. Big, big can of worms. Um, let me tell you. Really can. Oh, okay. So, we've got the bee going, right? Hey, cactus! Chi the bee. That's cute. Chi bee. And then the final one 
is the clover. I almost want to make the clover actually melancholy. Because I think it'd be funny to have a clover, which, like, it stands for good luck, right? But to have a symbol of good luck actually look unhappy. But I wanted it to be able to be used, like, kind of like I use it when I say goodbye to somebody or whatever. I put a heart on a clover, <laughs> so it's like, I love you, good luck! You but, know, um, I don't know if anybody knows what I'm talking about, but... Know. You know, when you're on the phone and you're like, you've got an automated system and it's like, it's like, and if you would like to hang up, you can hang up or press nine. No. It's like they say yeah. you can hang up. Yeah. Well then, then have you ever pressed nine to hang up? No. Cause sometimes I do that. Like, Goodbye. Well, one, one, sometimes I do that when it's something very important that I don't want it to mess up. Yeah. So I, I want to make sure that, you know, it goes through. So I, I'll, I'll hit that button and it's like, Okay. Goodbye. <laughs> it's like, whoa. It's super, like, yeah. almost mean. Yeah, it's like, goodbye. Okay, I'll do it for you. Goodbye. Yeah. Like, it's like, a, like they're talking to me like I'm five. Goodbye. It's like, you could have hung it up yourself. No. <laughs> but I like that they give you the, the just so that you know that they're going to hang up. Because otherwise, then it would, it would just immediately hang up. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> Basically. See, I kind of like him kind of mean. I don't know, Gabe would... <laughs> That's good. Like, he's he's just like, I'm a symbol of good luck. Oh, he is, he's like, he's like, yeah, you can touch me. Come on. Guess. No, that's not the shrub. Oh, who's this guy? This is the clover. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. So it's either that or he's no. happy. No, You no. like him upset? No, he's got to be like, because he's smaller than the clover, than uh, the, the shrub, right? Yeah. Yeah. So but he's I mean, just this like isn't, this isn't real anymore. This but, isn't real life. Okay. So then, is the clover gonna be shorter? I like melancholy clover. Okay. I love his name. I love that. Yeah. So I, I, I love that I figured out who he is right. through this. Like, like I call him melancholy clover, but it's like. Is that his name? No. Oh, okay. No, I made that. Up. Okay. So. But it, he's I not very melancholy it. though. I mean, it's it's not. Anger? But maybe it looks like apathy. It could be. It could be more of a like. I am not melancholy. I'm just tired of people saying that. Please stop saying that. And I, I think it's, don't have a problem. It is all clovers that are lucky, right? Not just shamrocks. I'm pretty sure it's. See, that's another thing. Shamrock versus clover. Wait, what's the difference? Shamrock is actually like the four-leaf clover. Oh. I think. <laughs> see, that's the other thing. They are different. A different clover. I don't read it as lucky. Damn it. I said good day, sir. <laughs> I don't know. I just think it's funny that a little symbol of good luck is just upset. <laughs> I don't know. What do you guys think? Okay, this is why I wanted to do this live. Do you like the idea of an apathetic, upset, melancholy like Clover, or do you want him to be happy-go-lucky, like, yay! Which would look more like... I don't know. So I'd probably redraw him to be... Actually, let's just redraw him. He would be more swaying like this, and he'd be like, hooray! Like, there'd be motion, and he'd be, yeah! You did the thing or something, or you're going, and he's like, hooray! And he's leaning forward because life and wee I don't know. Right? Like there's so much more happy there. Or do you like him literally just like that? Yeah, I'm upset they pluck us for good luck. You're killing me for your luck. I like that way more, you know? So Gabe, what do you think? Do you like him better like that? Or like this? Uh-uh. That no? does not fit him. Nope. Okay. Also, I, I, I like feel like that's fat and chubby and upset. Yeah, I feel like the the happy him, the happy one is like oh, everyone sees that. Should it say pluck you? Pluck you. Yeah, I like That'd it. be a good pin. Yeah. Mhm. Mm you guys, I want to make a pluck you pin where it's like what what Fire Steel said. It's like I'm mad at being plucked. Yeah. Pluck you. Oh my god. It's too bad like you can't put the P in it as red. So that it still reads luck. And it's got luck! Oh god, it's so good! There's so many layers! Mm -hmm. 
Oh my god! <laughs> I could put an underline on luck. I think the P would... Like, it would have the P bigger, so it's like yeah. this. Hold on. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, I'm in love with this. This is how ideas happen. <laughs> okay, so there'd be like a P, and then we could do this, something like that, and then either put the U like... Could even offset him, I guess, and have the U there. I mean, you sh I don't even think I want to put it in there. Uh -huh. I just kind of like him like that, but I want to make a pen now. Yeah. Like that is my next pen idea. I love uh -huh. that so much. Oh my God! There's so many layers. I love it so <laughs> much. No one steal that. I'm gonna make that pen. That's my next pen. I swear to God. And it has to do with my stream and my my characters. This is great. I, I for, uh, for a minute I thought uh, Linka was here, and I'm like, I'm looking at you, Linka. You're the pin queen around here. All right. You make so many pins. She knows pins, man. She knows pins. I'm too lazy to steal that. Fire seal. <laughs> your style would make an amazing pin. Yeah, it would. It really would. If you just hey, honestly, if you just took one of your dragon babies. And you just made a pin of just that? Oh my god, I would love that. Homie. Oh my god. Or even if you just did, uh, like, an, if you tried doing, like, an Indiegogo even. And just try to raise as much money out of it as you can. <laughs> no, Wade's freaking out at his own <laughs> idea. This is how this shit happens. It's great. Uh, <laughs> oh, pluck you, the okay. university goes to. I love that. That should yeah. be a shirt. I'd make the pluck you a shirt. <laughs> and then have this be, yeah. So good. Okay, so we're gonna have this clover, and we're gonna have this bee, which means be nice, okay? And then the rub them nubs. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna save, because I'm a good artist, I'm gonna save, and then I'm gonna export these, okay? And I'm gonna export them into the same folder, obviously. So this is the subshop. Okay. The problem is, even if I finish these today, and even if, best case scenario, I submitted them, dude, like, their, <laughs> their approval process takes a damn long time. Mm -hmm. It's, it's ridiculous. I'm glad they have it, but still. Oh, bye, Fire Seal! I did. Enjoy the bus. Public transportation! <laughs> What is this for? These are my emojis, Wade. Yeah. So if you look, I don't have a second and third tier emojis. I was wondering, why are people subbing to me on the other tiers for a year and a half? And I was like, oh, maybe because there are no emojis for them to sub and get. Hello? Gabe does the same thing. He's missing a third one. So it's kind of on our to-do. So since it has been, I figured, hey, learning experience, right? Of course. Uh, Alright. Well, bye, Eliza! Did it really, Wade? What about the first time you submit, though? Because if I change my clover to this one, I assume changing it won't be as bad as like submitting two brand new ones. It is, Katya, it can be. Um, especially when you get that urge to want to redesign your overlay, which I've been wanting to make follow animations and sub animations and all these things for so long, but I haven't had the time, but man, do they help. Any auxiliary things you can add to your stream that are like bells and whistles and stuff, that's what this is for. Twitch is really about bells and whistles, honestly, and how good you are at your entertaining, you know. I feel also it's uh, it's one of those things that you got to... Uh, oh, bye, mage. Bye, mage. You work on it over time. It's not like you just show up and you've got, like, the best layout in the world. Yeah, you know, and sometimes you'll end up like me and you'll have your same layout you started with a year later but you know what at least you have something right and something is better than nothing right um so it's better you just kind of kick out what you can and start with that 
So we're going to be using Clip Studio now to get these all nice and, and gooey. Gooey, get it? Graphics user interface? Ha. Oh. Oh. Very, very funny, Dr. Jones. So for anybody coming in right now, um, I just want to show you again these guys here. So whenever you're designing iconography or emojis or anything that's small, right? On a small scale digitally, this is a great way to work. When you have your window open, go to window, arrange, new window for that document. Because that's going to make an instance, not a duplicate, an instance of your actual document that you can shrink the size on so you can see somewhat of how it's going to reduce. It's not a one for one. It's still going to have some rendering issues, but it's still going to give you an idea of if you put too dark of a drop shadow on something, it's going to show you how detrimental it can be because on the big version, it might not look so bad. But when you see it on the small version, it can be a huge deal, huge. So it's good to always have that while you're working to see how every one of your strokes is affecting the small version, especially if you're doing pixel art, because every pixel could make a difference, okay? So be sure to do that if you're ever doing this. Hey, poet. Exactly, Katia. And I'd like mine to be more like that, especially since I have, you know, my starting soon animation. This is still not the best I want to do, but I did it for the time, and I've got my whole thing in place. I eventually want to do a full animated intro, so that was the starting soon. So once the actual, like, stream starts, I'd have a little cartoon, like, 30-second intro or something to the stream. I want to do that so bad, but I need time. I haven't got it yet. Pushing your hands hurts more than two birds flying away. <laughs> Ooh, watercolor cactus, can you share? C'est chia. C'est chia. C'est chia. Hold on. Noir. Noir. Parkour. Uh. <laughs> what? Pinot Noir. Avatar. Caviar. Caviar. Pinot Noir. Ah. <laughs> uh. Alright, so now I'm in Clip Studio. I highly recommend Clip Studio if you ever want really nice line art, okay? I did my entire coloring book in Clip Studio and I don't regret it for a minute. Um, it was the best use of their stabilizer I've ever seen and I'll show you what that looks like in a minute. So, in Clip Studio they have this wonderful tool called Stabilization, which, um, like Photoshop has tried to implement that recently. Their stabilizer sucks. It's real bad. Like it's so, so bad. Um, so I recommend not using Photoshop for that. And whenever Clip Studio slash Manga Studio has a sale to get it when you can. Um, it's also five bucks a month if you get it on the iPad which is pretty worth it, in my opinion, if you're out about and a lot and you want to sketch on your iPad. Um, if you make $20 a month on your art, you should get it. I like all these new things you're doing. Don't talk about it. Be about it. What shows do we have coming up? So the rest of this year, we just have New York Comic Con. That's the 4th through the 7th of October, so next week. Oh my god, next week's October. Nope. And then I got into FairyCon. So we'll be at FairyCon in Baltimore, Maryland, November 8th through the 11th. I think the show's only the 9th through the 11th, but so far just those two. Um, Gabe got into TwitchCon, but that it's hard for us to do West Coast shows, especially in California, because they are so expensive. So we could have done TwitchCon, but we really can't swing it this year um hopefully next year mm -hmm. and then after that in february we have anime milwaukee um in march we've got emerald city uh, we'll find out if we're in c2e2 next year uh in november so we'll let you know Ooh, original fiction yeah poet yeah 
Incantations? Where, Creech? What part are you talking about? Okay, so back to the stabilizer. So here's what it looks like without the stabilizer, okay? Let's even do... Um, put some pen pressure on that bitch. Okay, so see how it's kind of wobbly, right? And I can maybe actually... It's a little bit better. Yeah, okay. So I'm okay at lining. Look, these are even good here. I can't believe this. Okay, let me show you in Photoshop how bad it is first. <laughs> instead of clip studios like default is still really good which is messed up okay so in photoshop oh yeah okay well not to mention this is a hella small document oh yeah okay all right okay so uh, okay if i was going to line something all right, and I have this spot on my Cintiq. You see this right here? There's a divot. If I'm just drawing a line, <laughs> you can see it. It's in the same spot. It's about, God, how big is this? How big does this go? It's about that big on my screen. So I kind of have to avoid that when I'm working. But you can see here how wibbly wobbly that is, all right? Now back into Clip Studio, that's without stabilization. We're already that good, okay? That's messed up. So usually I've got the stabilizer at 55, which is pretty high for some people. And it usually looks pretty good. There is a bit of a lag on it, but look at that, okay? Photoshop, stabilizer, <laughs> Clip Studio. Holy damn, right? Okay, look at that line. Look at that line. What? Photoshop by the tech from Clip Studio. Seriously, this is not even a thing. Look at these. It's so good. Even without it, it's still better than Photoshop. It blows my mind. It actually makes me really upset. Because I really love Photoshop, but you know what? They've let me down. They've just let me down. So now I'm going to import those really rough, crappy cute things that I did, and we're going to actually ink them all nice, it's going to be all good. Right, Ray? It's good, man. Oh, Pinot Noir Avatar Parkour. Gabe, do you want to put a link to the video? How was Dragon Con? Um, equally as good as last year, if not a little bit better. I think I made uh, a grand more than last year. Um, so Dragon Con for us is like a super stable show, which is pretty unheard of for some shows to be that on, like, with how close they are a year apart. It's pretty good. Um, it's so good, man. I, hi, Hemlock. I love the stabilizer so much. Noir, an ode to black penis. <laughs> There you go. Okay. Just put it in there. They need the video. I was trying to make sure that it was the right one. Okay. Cactus! I love this! But it's in another way. Are you gonna outline it with anything? Like ink or uh, maybe a colored pencil to say stay soft? Gabe, you were pretty solid at Dragon Con, right? You did better than last year? Oh yeah. yeah. Twice as much. Twice as much. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, Creech, mine is the old one, too. I think it's from 2012. So, Hemlock, thank you. Thank you for that follow. I appreciate it. Um, but yeah, this is this is the older one, too. I don't even think it was... It's the 13? I think it was the 12? <laughs> so that's pretty old. Yeah, I would, Cactus. I would. Um... Maybe with the same color on each bit that you did, like have green on the green parts and a different colored pencil color on the other ones, or maybe just try like a brown and go over everything. Like that's usually what I do, but okay. So we got the sub shrub, we got the be nice and we got melancholy clover. Um, 
So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put them each in their little folders. Okay. Um, so I end up having multiple like source docs for a lot of my stuff because I'll do some of it in Clip Studio and then I'll do the other part of it in Photoshop. Um, usually my, my main work workflow is like doing the, the sketches, right? And then scanning them in um, and then doing them in Clip Studio after I've treated them in Photoshop just so I could see them better. Um, Clip Studio, ink them, throw them back into Photoshop because in Clip Studio you can save out your files as PSDs, which is really nice. They also use a lot of the same keystrokes as Photoshop. So I think that's funny, um, but it's helpful. And you can also make your own per usual. So I'm gonna lower the opacity on this so it's easier to see. And then I'm also gonna save this source file in here. So what do I call it? Icons, but these are the inked versions. And I'm gonna save them as Clip Studio just for this. But now I'm not gonna do any of the text bits because I can do that fine in Photoshop. I'd rather do it somewhere where I'm more used to doing text, which is Photoshop over Clip Studio. But for being in here, we're gonna do this. And I actually think I'm gonna do no line variation on these. Because I feel like when it gets reduced, it's going to act a lot differently if it's got that line variation. Um, so, let me see if I can Backspace, can I do the new window? Yeah, okay. So I can do the same thing I did in Photoshop in Clip Studio because they like copying Photoshop, where I make the new window and I shrink it so I can see it at a very small size so I can see how my stuff is affecting, like every line is affecting the whole overall shape. So I'll try it with the line variation first. And then I can kind of see what it does in the lower one here. Doesn't look too bad. Looks a little bit flash animation-y, right? But then if I go in here and I get rid of the pen pressure, okay? It's a little bit bigger than I want. Mm, it's too small. Now, as you can see, there's no line variation here, which it looks a lot more professional and a lot more emoji-like down here now. So I'll probably do that. As much as I do usually like the tapering, I can't do it because it's really not gonna speak well to the form at a small size. So, gotta watch out for that. And for those just coming in, um, Gabe and I thought of a <laughs> special stream finally. For the longest time, our donation bar at the bottom has just said special stream, which we've done in the past. And we've just kind of vocally told everybody, well, we're gonna be doing this. And in the past, we've had Cooking with Cloverkin, which I still owe one special stream to you guys. Um, the Puppet stream, which that one I still have to do. I did a Sculpting stream. Gabe uh, has to do a Game Boy Mod stream still. Um, and he did a... You did a Sculpt stream, right? Yes. There's another special stream you did, though. I forgot. Um, but yeah. this time... We're going to actually watch Frozen for the first time because we are probably the last people on Earth who haven't seen it. So we figured we'd make a thing of it. So we're gonna dress up in costumes. We're gonna have Frozen, what we think are Frozen themed foods. We don't know, we're not gonna really do any like research on it. So we're gonna have things that, I don't know, like a bowl of ice cubes or something, I don't know. <laughs> um, and Gabe will oh, be Elsa. Maybe we could have like, uh, we'll buy some dry ice so it's constantly like... That'd be neat. Yeah, yeah. And then um, I'll pick one of the really ugly characters that I know nothing about. So if I'm dressed up as a character that's terrible in the movie, I don't care. And then we'll draw some fan art during it because it's funny. I don't know. And we'll just riff and make fun of the movie. Kind of mystery science theater-esque. Um, if you've ever seen Gabe's Skyrim streams, they're pretty awesome. Um, his commentary is pretty good, so. I want a Skyrim soon. This. Huh? I want a Skyrim soon. Do it tonight. But maybe I can hey, do Sig. something else. Yeah, do whatever you want. 
Yeah, so it's going to be pretty fun. So I kept the $40 that was donated for the special stream, because technically this is that. We just didn't know what it was going to be yet. So we're going to do that, and we're actually excited about it. Um, so we won't be showing, obviously, the movie for copyright reasons. It's really just going to be a camera on us for how long is it, like an hour and a half? Probably. Whatever, however long it is. Just sitting in costumes, eating, and yelling at the TV. Maybe maybe if we can find it, the, that short, if it's out yet. Maybe that might we'll be some, that. I don't know, we'll see. Yeah. yeah, we'll have to find that because everybody said it was too long, it was too boring. The short that was like a frozen short that people walked out of the theater because it wasn't a short. It's basically like what another was movie. That during? Was that during? I don't remember, but kids are freaking out. Yeah. They're like, Mom, I gotta go to the bathroom. <laughs> I gotta leave. Elsa's making me want to piss. <laughs> Young man. Young man. Do not use those so. words. That's on the docket, we'll say. It was 30 minutes long, Jesus. Wow. So that's actually pretty perfect, though, for a Twitch stream. So then it'd be, able, what, like a two-hour long stream with that included? Yeah. That sounds great to me. So we'll do that. Um, we are going to probably be moving December 1st. So depending on when we get to our $200 donation thing, um, we'll do it then. But... Uh, yeah, if we're still living here, we'll do it here. Otherwise, we'll do it in a new apartment. Um, but yeah. Girl. Damn, I love this stabilizer. So good. Girl. Yeah. Girl. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. And I don't think they can get me for the audio. I don't know, though. I'll have to I mean, you won't be able to. You won't really hear it, I don't think. Maybe a little bit. I don't know. I don't think you'd be able to, uh, uh, what's the word? Oh, see, this is too small down here. I don't like this area. This is why you gotta keep it up while you're doing this. Yeah, that's a bit better. It kinda looks like my hamster, so I'm okay with this. You know what? It'll definitely block out. What? That song. Or songs. <gasps> Oh, songs. you'll get to watch me cringe during musical scenes. I hate musicals. The only musical I can stand that I didn't even realize was a musical was Labyrinth. I didn't even, it didn't even occur to me ever that it was a musical. And I love the movie. So I, you know, but other things like Grease? Oh my god. That'll be another stream. Because I'll just look surly the entire time. <laughs> I will watch that for the sake of the stream. <laughs> I'll wear a sign on cardboard written in Sharpie that says hates musicals <laughs> while I'm watching it. I swear to God. Well, there's also, um, La La Land was good. Oh, that's right. That was yeah. one, too. Yeah. I but love that, that was, director. You though. know what, though? That was old school musical to me. Yeah, I'm okay yeah. watching, like, what, 1920s? Yeah. Where they're singing and dancing? Yeah. I like that. I don't know why. But when it's, like, Rent or Grease... God, I hate Greece. I, I don't get it. <laughs> Thanks, Sniggle. No, that's okay. Enjoy the rest of your day, right? Didn't we just move? Yes, we did. <laughs> so, an explanation of our crazy moving. So, we moved to this apartment because we really wanted to change where we were. Um, we didn't like living in a house with, like, seven people total. It was too much for me. I'm really bad at roommates. Like, I'm just bad at it. Um, our, you know, our friends and stuff that we lived with were great. It's just, I'm awful. So, I like to live alone. I really like to be by myself. Gabe's cool living with because he's pretty, like, un he, he doesn't really do much to inhibit my aloneness. So, anyway, I just needed to be by myself because I was starting to nag everyone. Who's pissing on the seat, you know? <laughs> who's making all this stuff terrible in the kitchen? Like, I was becoming a terrible person. And I had to make the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, Ghostbusters. Um, and he helped me when I was a dog. Um, so we needed to move out. So we moved here, which is about an hour away from where we used to live. And it was cheap. It was a two bedroom, one bathroom. Um, like I said, cheap, it's 620 for where we are. The Where it is is fantastic. We love the town, it's great. 
Um, keep in mind, Gabe's from Illinois, I'm from Minnesota, and now we both live in Wisconsin, so it's kind of meeting in the middle. Um, but to move into the roommate house, we both gave up our dogs. So Gabe had a pug named Lulu. I had an English bulldog named Tilly. And I left her with my ex-husband. Gabe gave up Lulu so that we could live in the art house with all the art buddies. And because um, someone there had an allergy and totally understandable. Um, so we had to do that. It was, it was probably better we did because then we got to go headstrong into conventions and not worry about, you know, who's gonna watch my dog, this sort of thing. So it was actually kind of a blessing in disguise. However, now we want to really slow down on conventions and cut them in half at least. So we're not doing like one to two a month. It'd be better to just do one every two months. Um, so next year, that's our goal. But we moved in here and they have this rule where six months in, you can move again or transfer the unit um, if it's within the company, okay? So this company um, also has some that are technically a 30 second drive away from us that we didn't know about when we moved in that are pet friendly because Gabe and I want a baby, AKA a puppy. Because we're puppy folk, we don't want children. Um, so we're gonna move to that one. It's bigger too. It's, uh, this is how big, seven something? 870 square feet. 870 square feet here. We're moving to a 1015 square feet. Um, it also comes with a garage and it's got a balcony because I always wanted a balcony and we get to have our dock. So we're totally hyped about that. Um, but yeah, the place lets you transfer six months in. So it is six months in, it's a little past that. So we're gonna move again, which is great because a lot of our stuff is still in boxes. So it's like, that works out. Uh, our laziness worked out. Um, but if we wanted to actually move to a different um, company or you know a housing complex that wasn't under the same umbrella that this one is, we'd have to wait the full year lease. So this worked out really stupid well, and we're pumped. So yeah, it's gonna be another bulldog. <laughs> I don't want to hear anybody giving me any bulldog advice. I've had bulldogs. I know all the bad, all the good, everything, okay? Please do not try to lecture me. Um, for those of you who like bulldogs and want one, really look into the care, because it's like having a two-year-old the entire life, basically. Like my old dog, I had to uh, clean her butt every time she went to the bathroom because their tails are so, you know, knit and ingrained in there. You have to lift and like clean their tail pocket. You have to clean their wrinkles multiple times a day. And the only reason I'm like getting one again is because we're home all day, right? Except for conventions, which like I said, we want to really pull down on that by a lot um, so that we can just spend time with the pup and do our work. And that's our ideal life. Really it is. Um, so yeah. If anybody wants to see my old pup, um, my ex-husband is great about keeping up with her Instagram. He puts up things. He basically, I think, does it for me so I can still see her. Uh, we're on great terms. It's not a bad thing at all. Um, so don't feel weird like, oh, my ex-husband, I don't know. It's totally fine. Um, but here she is. She's a sweet, sweet baby. <laughs> Fairy portals, yeah. Totally gonna make one of those. Yeah, I'm actually gonna get a shrub too. <laughs> Plant children, that would be nice because we've got a really nice big window. Like this apartment is great. I love it, but you know. Oops. Jesus. Oh, thanks guys. Yeah, I was at the Vaughn House Hemlock. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. That was us. We were the basement we trolls. We lived there for two years, something like that. Did I live there longer than you, or was it about the same? Uh, a year, uh, uh, like a half, half, half a year. So you mm -hmm. came in in the summer. August thirtieth, yeah. twenty fifteen. Yeah. yeah, and then yeah. I got in there December, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, maybe it was January. It was January. Remember, yeah. it was after my birthday? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. 
wonder if I should make this a little bit different. Maybe that looks weird. Oh, I actually like that more. Which side do you guys like better? This side? This hand? Or this hand? Which one do you like better? This one almost looks too much like a mitten. I don't, I don't think I like that. This one's kind of cute, though. I think I might do that one. Left? Okay. Yeah, me, me too. I think left is better as well. And at reduced size, it still looks pretty cute. So we'll go with that. And then this is going to get a little dicey here. actually want to do his eyebrows. I kind of just like him being a little manic. Maybe he'd look cute. I don't know. Nah. I could do those. See, this is one of those things where it's like, I could animate those later. Um, when he's actually animated, but for a static image, sometimes it's good to omit things, uh, just for the sake of the silhouette, uh, for clarity of the character image, so. Oh, that's great, Hemlock. Yeah, they're wonderful people. Wonderful people, great artists. Um, I, I did come to a conclusion, though, uh, when I lived with all, everybody. The better artist you are, the worse you are at chores. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna leave it at that. You can you can make your assumptions about the men. That's the worst I'll say. So this one's pretty good. You can look down here at his little thing. I kind of picture him being animated and like, if I give him feet, they're just gonna be little twigs that look like bird feet like this. Oh my God, he just looks like a fluffy bird. I love him. Um, so once I do animate him, now for those that are coming in, this is a redraw, uh, a redesign actually of my sub shrub I've got. I'm trying to make it so, because every time somebody subs, I use this guy, and he's actually made by Sanrio, Sanex, the people that make Hello Kitty. But he's become so ingrained in my stream culture that I really feel wrong using a pre-established copywritten character. So I'm taking the idea that I implanted onto him, this whatever this is, he's actually a weed, he's not even a shrub, and I'm kind of just taking that lore, extracting it from this, and throwing it into the, the stream itself. So I'm designing my own sub shrub, um, and on this guy, I usually rub his nubs for good luck, that's where the nub thing came from, so I'm not gross, it's just, it's whatever. So, there's this one, then there's the bee. Um, I wanted a be nice thing, just in case someone's in a stream and some guy's being a dick or something. You can be like, be nice, you know? I just, like, my ideal version of using this would be just a flood of them mm -hmm. happening. Be nice, be nice, be, be nice. nice. Be nice. Like, it's a warning before you get, uh, like, kicked. And then this is my Melancholy Clover. Um, so he's also canon. <laughs> um, but I, I really needed my uh, Twitch subs to be finalized and it's been over a year and a half. And I was like, why aren't we getting subs at different tiers? And it's because we only have one tier emoji. And it's like, oh shit, I gotta make the other two emojis. So that's what's going on. And that's what's happening. Let me actually change that to be a little bit bigger. There we go. And I'm using Clip Studio right now to ink because it is far advanced compared to Photoshop in terms of inking. They have their own stabilizer that is not jank balls like Photoshop's is. <laughs> oh, 
Maybe you should be looking at the viewer. Yeah, there we go. Like, I'm sick of your, your junk guy. And I think if I were going to animate this guy, because I am going to animate all these at some point, um, but I think his, his leaflets on the side are going to be his arms, that's why they kind of look like they've got thumbs. So do I animate in Photoshop? Only when I don't have access to After Effects. After Effects is like my ideal animation program, because you can do puppet animation easier in there, and it's a better layout and system for importing frame by frame animation. So ideally After Effects, but that's technically 20 bucks a month, where Photoshop is just 10. So typically I'll just animate in Photoshop because it is cheaper. Like I did this in just Photoshop, just because I wanted an animated starring soon screen. Um, and then I'll eventually animate an intro like an actual intro to a cartoon almost. Um, I have an animation degree, so that's part of the reason why. Boom. But, um, so I also like to animate these guys, so I'm gonna add them into my mythos of for my character. Um, for those that don't know, I've actually had a bunch of people do some really cute, fun fan art of Cloverkin. Which is really weird. I still don't know whether it's say me or the... I don't know. She rides around in a giant hamster. I don't think I have any available right now. Anyway. Um, you can find a lot of that stuff on my Instagram. Be nice than a little beach below. Yeah, basically. You could have... Uh, the sub shrub, then you could have the bee nice and the bee nice looking at the clover who's just like, I'm sick of your shit bee, you know? Um, animated weed. Soul transfer. Basically, yeah, Creech, you got it. You got it. Um, so, let's see. That's pretty good. His top is a little bit too high for me, but... It is so funny, so many of these keystrokes are the exact same. Like, I don't know if I want... No, that's not a real thunderstorm. Wishful thinking, I know. Um, I'm gonna resize that in Photoshop, I think, because his... I'm gonna call it his crown. It's a little too big. Actually, maybe I'll just redraw it. It's the glory of digital, yo but it's also the bane of digital. I also don't like, I draw clovers the same way I kind of draw hearts. I don't like really deep valleys in each one of these. Um, I like to keep them really kind of shallow and fat, you know? Oh yeah, much better, okay. So does anybody have any questions so far? I know I've gone over a lot of stuff this stream, but let me know if I'm going too fast. Watch out, I'm gonna crash. Why can't I clear that? That's weird. Huh. Sometimes it won't let me just delete, which is really strange. I wonder if that's because... No, it should just let me clear it. That's weird. So if I clear outside it, it's going to clear all of that. Weird. Maybe I can just do it with the eraser then. Yeah. Oh, what? What is this? weird it was like vectorizing it oh vector eraser yeah no get out of here i never turned that on i didn't invite you <laughs> really want to try it in, but no idea where to start huh well here do you have photoshop hemlock 
kind of creativity juice do you use? Uh, what keeps you motivated and creative? So, in the past, we've done a lot of streams about this. Um, so I can give you kind of a condensed version, but the best thing you can do is just always be brainstorming and thinking of original ideas. Stay as far away from fan art as you possibly can. Um, because the more you actually develop your ideas, brainstorm, actually use your visual library of everything you've already seen and, and experienced in the past, you're going to get better at synthesizing ideas into better constructs, right? They're going to be better uh, literally constructed, right? Because it's the practice makes perfect thing, right? But even perfect practice makes perfect, because if you practice the wrong thing, a million times, it's not going to be good or right, right? So make sure you're always practicing the right thing. But um, yeah, for anybody who wants to see <laughs> Gabe and my stance on fan art, check out this site. It's comprehensive and good. We don't like stealing from other creators. And as people in the convention sphere, we see this way too much that creators are stealing money and fame from other creators and it's not right and it has to stop so that's our stance on that <laughs> for more examples which are up there um, of like what to avoid check it out otherwise um, for motivation so Creech I know you're a puppet person so I don't know if this is exactly gonna work for you but for artists in general I have this um, it's it's kind of a get your butt in motion no matter what sort of thing. It's, uh, yeah, please spread the site. If you agree with it, please spread it because the problem is getting it out there right now so that people know it's wrong and illegal. A lot of kids upcoming in conventions don't know it's illegal. And that's been really bothering me uh, a lot because they need to know that. Um, and a lot of convention like starting convention things say to do fan art or you won't succeed. That's utter absolute bullshit. It's like taking drugs. Do not start, okay? Um, but anyway, back to the, the motivation thing. If you're feeling super lackluster or unmotivated, uninspired one day, um, I have this thing called a happy hardcore list, okay? And for any of you that are familiar with the genre of music, yeah, it is kind of named after that because I love it. But it's also a a good rule, I guess. Here, I'll even paste in what I did the other day. Um, so I'll paste this in here. So you also have a written version. But before I paste it, because I don't want you reading while I'm talking, um, I'll say it first, then I'll paste it so you've got a written version. Um, happy Hardcore List. So. The happy version of the list, there's technically two lists of this happy hardcore list. The happy side is a list of probably like five to ten things that you enjoy drawing or creature in your, you know, uh, in your field, I guess, just making. Um, and for writers, things you like to write. Five to ten things you enjoy writing, making, drawing, okay, regardless of how good you are at it, okay? That's the key to it. So you take five minutes that day, let's say five. It could even be 30 seconds if you're feeling super anxious about it or whatever. Um, but take like five minutes, say, okay, I'm gonna look at my happy list. And for me on my happy list, there are things like leaves, organic matter, chibi characters, just things I'm super comfortable with. And like I said, you don't even have to be good at drawing them. If you enjoy drawing them, that's the point because this whole thing is to technically lube you up to do something else, okay? So it's really to set the mood and get you kind of in the groove of doing it, right? Um, the hardcore side of it is a five to 10 word list of things you're not so good at that you really want to work on for the days you're feeling a little bit cocky and you actually need a challenge. Because sometimes it's good to actually have this list to reference. Um, I found in these times I kind of just blank out if I don't have a list to look at and I'll be like, what do I even like? And I won't even be able to think of anything that day because usually those days where you're uninspired or unmotivated, you just can't think. You're super foggy and you can't concentrate. So it's really good to have something actually recorded and written down that tells you, oh yeah, you like this thing. 
you're like, oh, I do. Oh, I want to draw that. And so you go do that, right? And then on the days where you don't know what to draw, maybe, but you're feeling super good about yourself and you're like, yeah, I'm kind of, I'm in my groove. I've been drawing a lot lately. Let's try something new or something I failed at in the past or something or redraw something that I totally debauched, right? Resort to the hardcore list. Um, so here's a version of that. Covert full-time illustration, so keep to this one. Okay, cool, Creech, gotcha. Yes, Hemlock, OC is best. OC is investing in yourself, okay? Any original art of any kind is always gonna be investing in yourself because you can use that to make so many products and no one can sue you. <laughs> Isn't that nice? <laughs> if you, you know, you can't make a book of all the fan art you've done unless the only caveat to selling fan art is if you have permission from the company. Gabe here has worked for like DC, Marvel, and Oni in the past, so he would be able to potentially get permission. Hey, can I sell, you know, this life after fan art? And they'd probably be like, yeah, you made these characters and stuff. Sure, go for it. But for anyone else, um, my tactic usually is to we get trades a lot at conventions. We'll have an artist come up to us and be like, oh, I love your art. Do you do, do you do trades? And I'll be like, if I see something I like, yeah. And if you don't do fan art or if you've got something original, yeah. And usually they have a 50-50 split, which is a terrible idea. It says on that website, I highly suggest going to the website, the eat your vegetables um, topic. So good. It's about like... Um, you know, how your table is split and why it's hurting you, go 100% original or else you're just doing yourself a disservice. Um, so that's that part of it. But yeah, OC is really good. I know OC is usually original character, but I think it should be original content. That'd be good too. But I guess it could double the same. Yeah, maybe it's turned into that at this point. All right. So if anybody has any questions on either the happy hardcore list or the fan art thing, let me know. I'm happy to oblige. So I'm going to save this now as also a PSD so I can actually start coloring parts of it because I don't want to necessarily save it as the Clip Studio document and uh, start doing the color version. So I'm going to actually rename this Icons Color and save it as a PSD. So technically by this point, I have three different versions of this file. One that's the roughs, one that's the inks, and one that's going to be the colors and finals. Um, but yeah. That's good, Creech. That's really good. I'm glad you've actually been hired on to do those things. Um, I get in fights and lose a lot of friends because of my stance, but I will not budge on it. Because if somebody's stealing, you know, money or content from someone else, who's to say they won't steal from me? Like, it's an absolute um, commentary on your moral compass and what you could potentially do in the future. So being around people that are okay with doing that freaks me out, I'll be honest. Maybe they'll steal from me one day, I don't know. Let's see. You're welcome, Creech. Thanks for listening. Okay. So, let's go back into here. Oh, when they changed all the subscriber stuff, they must have gotten rid of all our icons. I haven't seen my flower, my mushroom, my rock for a really long time. What? Remember that? And they changed it so you could make all the different icons, and there's so many. <laughs> uh -huh. Oh my god, it's crazy. Bye, Katya! Bye, yeah. Thanks for coming! Alright, so... Let's see. I'm gonna actually pull from my own colors here, too. I was gonna say, yeah, didn't Henson even like, Muppet is a copywritten term even I thought, because it, it's a marionette puppet. So I thought that meant that no one else could really do that. And also I'm just so intrigued by puppetry just because 
um, like it's engineering, mm-hmm. like it is seriously engineering. And to be a good, you know, puppeteer, I would think you not only have to be really expressive with the, all your body parts, but you also have to be kind of knowledgeful when it comes to, you know, knowing how things work. Like, I wouldn't even be surprised if they had, like, you know, an engineering type class, or at least one that revolved around really light basic engineering for puppetry. That'd be awesome. I would love to do that. If I lived, like, an eternal life, (laughs) I would totally do that as my next, like, okay, I'm kind of, I'm tired of illustration. Like, I'm gonna look into puppetry. I think that'd be dope. Alright, so right now, let's actually go back to the subshop. Hello, subshop. So I'm going to go back into my original PSD, and I'm going to import the um, text that I've got here so I don't have to remake it. That's just being smart. So I'm re-inputting it. I'm going to do that for the B here, too. in there. And then B, the nice, put that in there. And since they're all the same size, if you click Command and Shift and drag it over into the other file, it's in the exact same spot. Disney owns all the they have lawyers. Creech, that's exactly how fan art works. So they have lawyers, they have like these people in the past who have actually gone to conventions and done the cease and and desist, but since Disney acquired Marvel, that has really cut down because it's too much time and effort for the company, as well as money. So it's more money for them to spend to, to get someone out there to shut all these artists down than it is to say, use them as cheap advertising, right? Because an advertising firm costs tons and tons of money, but if you've got all these little people that are doing it for free, you know, is it more worth it to go shut them down, or...? Yeah, I'm like, right? It's crazy. It's crazy. Okay, so... This is the B. still has the crappy old one in it, so we're going to change that. Now, I might use the same green too much. Gabe, do you think the shrub should be like a blue-green and the color should, uh, clover should be yellow-green? Or do you think having the same green for them is okay? No. It's got to be different. Okay. Probably blue for the shrub. Yeah, blue-green for the shrub. Yeah. Yeah, the Bowsette stuff is nuts right now. It's crazy. It's crazy hilarious. I mean, as long as they don't start selling it, it's fine. Uh, You know, I mean, it's still technically illegal, but no one cares about if it's on the internet right now unless they're actually making money. Any sort of derivative work off of anything copywritten is always illegal, but... Oh, autumnal. So you're saying I could make him yellow, but then he'd be yellow all the time. That might be tough. Also the colors on the screen that you guys are seeing versus mine are completely off and I can't tell if it's OBS that's off or if it's my actual, no it's OBS. Because this, I have three monitors right now, and it's the same color on all the monitors and different on OBS, and I don't know why. I really don't know why, because I don't have any filters on the display capture at all. Nothing like that. So I have no idea. Oh, bye, Cactus! Thanks for coming. We miss you. Yeah. I just have a problem with that 
all year round. It might look like he's dying. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want him to die. I like the idea of him being very different colors, but I don't want to go that far. That might be a little bit too far. So, all right, right now I'm just going to hide those and I'm going to connect this with a color I'm not going to use at all just to make sure I get rid of it, okay? So all this is doing is actually selecting. If I'd sample all layers, I'll select him, and then I usually um, expand the selection, and not 20, but 10. So therefore, the selection is going halfway under my line art. And then if I make another layer here, and I color that in, let's say, I'm gonna do fully here too. And then delete that red line, and then I can change this to be more blue, I guess. There you go. And then nubs. Now I have to figure out nubs is gonna be above him. I have to figure out then what color to make this in. Like I said earlier, it's good to actually take a swatch of the dark mode and the light mode. And that's what I've got here. So I can actually see all my emojis on both the, dar the dark and the light mode um, UI choices that you can have. So this is just in case, like, let's say I wasn't paying attention and I made the text black. And if somebody had dark mode, they wouldn't be able to read that, right? So that's the purpose we're doing that. Um, let's say knobs. And let's maybe do a mask. Select knobs. Go a little bit outside that. Do this. Now this might actually be way too much of, uh, it might be way too thin. So before, Go into much more of that. Make sure we put that in there. Okay. So on the smaller one, you can kind of see it's outlining it. I almost really want to move this up too. I'm gonna unlock the masks from them so I can actually move um, the shrub itself without affecting uh, the nubs mask. So I moved it up too. Move this up too. It's still having problems with that T. So I can fix that by shrinking the T. Like shrinking this, moving it up so it's more readable. But at the same time, we still have the same problem. I could do that. That kind of looks good. Anytime you skew a font, either vertically or horizontally, without keeping it, um, keeping the proportions confined, it's gonna look really like you don't know what you're doing, unfortunately. Hey Katie, what's up? Yes, mint. There you go. It's a mint shrub. What are you doing, Katie? So I'm probably gonna put these in a folder then. And then That's not too bad. It might look better as a hard line though. That's always good to play with too. And obviously Photoshop's silly about that sometimes. So you have to do an actual hard line. And I actually like that. The only problem is that up here you can see that his little nubs are a little bit close to that line. We're getting the awkward touching. So I might actually sacrifice some of the height of nubs. <laughs> it's so silly to say this. Some of the height of nubs. So we can actually get more of the subshrub in there. But also some some fonts are okay stretched out. I don't know, this one's not too bad when it's that way. Of course, 
course, I had to fix something with this strange shape. Okay, T. Just sketching things. How's your comic? Are you still working on that with the kitty? From Journey June? Still got that going? Oh, actually. I don't know. Katie, have you done other comics? I don't know if you've done oh, other Oh, yeah, other show her that thing you found. But, um, there's a... There's a, a show in Chicago called, uh, Cake. And it's, uh... I forget Chi where Katie is. I don't know. But, uh, it's, a, it's like Chicago alternative... It's kind of hoity-toity. It's like high art for comics, almost. Yeah, it's just, um... What the hell does Cake stand for? Oh, know. Chicago Alternative Comics Expo, but it's not C A C E. It's cake, as in like a piece of cake. But anyways, um, they they have like a a contest every year, um, and if you haven't like hit like gotten your big break, like if you haven't pu been published by anybody big, uh, then they they sort of like let the the younger people come in and. Uh, try to they have a contest so you get 250 bucks to make your own little zine your own little comic and then you also get uh, like a free half table at the show and uh, uh, you get like a mentorship from a, one of the special guests there but I mean like if you um, I don't know if you've done any other little comics but might be worth to check it out. Doesn't look too bad. Katie, I forget where are you located. Were you actually in Florida? Because we we saw you at Supercon. I know we talked there, but. It might be kind of far for her. If yeah, she was I know. in Florida. But I mean, like, honestly, at least though, he told you. it is a very, very good show. Oh, in terms Nashville. Of, okay. Um, it's a very good show in terms of uh, for people. Exposure? Like it, not even just exposure. Like, it, everyone who goes there does really well because it's a. Uh, there's a lot of really, uh, like, big uh artists that go there it's just a good community of people i guess too so like it's just people do well there because it, it is a smaller show either or also like really small like it's in like a little hall um so there's only i mean there's like a bunch of creators but still there it's very well attended for the amount of creators there and there's you know it's not like there's um uh like wrestling stars and stuff like that mm. or movie stars it's all comics and it's all like indie comics like things and you're not gonna find like uh like joe mad or 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 uh or rob liefeld there you're not gonna find them you're gonna find all these like really like low-key uh awesome illustrators there then all of the silhouettes of the shrub and the word is going to start blurring together and you're not going to be able to visually differentiate at this level. So I'll show you, just so I'm not like spouting shit out my butt. Um, so let's say, I've got the thing here. So if we brought this down, you can already see in here, it's like, why? Because then it's ruining the depth you're actually establishing where he's behind this bit but he's in front of this bit so it's almost got that 3d effect to it um and you can further push that by doing things like adding a drop shadow here okay let's see if i did this like pretty dark 
rope inside. Right, let's say it was like that. I know that's a little bit harsh. But keep looking at the smaller one. The smaller one's the one you should be looking at, not the big one, okay? And then this big one here, right? If we did the same thing, he looks like he's in front of it, right? See what I did there? So if this one, let's say that we put this up here. Then he's like got his little setup. Remember to be looking here. Because I've actually been doing this whole thing while looking at the small one, because that's the one that's going to be in the chat. You know, it's going to be as big as Paladin's little robot head there. So. Oh, gotcha, creature. Oh, that's awesome, Katie. You should also look into um, SPX. You have it? Yeah, small press. It's a small press expo. Hey, Paladin, thank you for the, the bits, homie. How you been? Okay, so let's. I'm gonna get rid of that because I'm not sure yet where I want to go with that, honestly. Let's go back to the B for a bit. Get him fleshed out a bit more. Busy painting? That's great though, Paladin. Good job. Getting a lot done. Okay. So let's go back to this. I'll probably be on for a little bit longer tonight. Not too much longer, maybe maximum 45 more minutes. Max. Paladin said, hey Gabe. Hello, Paladin. Photoshop, there's an option to have a line and have that line be hatched, but I know it wouldn't be the way I want it to be. B, 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 B. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this one and we're going to do that same document trick that we did on everything else. And we're going to do it in Clip Studio here. So we can see if we want them further apart or not. So they might actually be too close together. Where I don't want them to necessarily look like a line, I want them to look like, you know, hatched hair. Because the bee is fuzzy. And if, uh, if you're not familiar with this bee, he's actually from my Journey June story, where I've got a witch bear named Hazel. Check that out, that's on my Instagram. If you're interested. So he's still canon. <laughs> Technically, all my characters are still canon. And I'm gonna do an effect with these lines that are behind the wing. I'm going to push them back probably a little bit so they look like they're behind the wing, but I'm not going to do that quite yet. I'm just going to make sure it's on a different layer. Shift 
actually, I just want to copy that. So, what I've said before about consistency still stands. Can I actually take that, move this up, and this is going to go away. And this is going to go away. And this is actually going to be thinner. So that gives an appearance of disappearing almost behind the other one due to line thickness and what else. Um, I'll do the same there. And then here, I'm gonna actually get rid of this stuff. So if you look down here, even just getting, watch, watch the small one here as I delete just this one hair. You see the difference that it makes? Like, the clarity is ridiculous. Show fluffy. <laughs> yes, he's a good one. He's kind of spunky. He's got the, uh, kind of the mannerisms in a, as a, of a dog, I guess, in the comic itself. And then this one actually ends up being a little too close, in my opinion. So, we're going to redraw that hair a little bit bigger. Alright. It's a honey puppy. I love that. It's so cute. So, he's gonna have a band of black, like bees do. And in the past, I've usually done this with pencil, so I've never actually done him digitally yet. So I'm still trying to maintain how I would do him with pencil but digital. <laughs> I'm going to actually do this first, and then I'm going to cut them down to the actual contour I need so that it's actually super consistent. icons and emojis and stuff is that their big versions can look kind of ugly. Honestly, that's okay as long as the small version looks good. I know it sounds stupid and wonky, but it's totally true. And then we're going to go in here. I'm going to kind of take the same idea we did before with the wing and do it here too. And even just with doing lines like this, this is going to give the appearance of, like, if I painted it, you know, to have these attributes, but it's just playing with lines. That's it. I mean, this is how you get crazy line variation and different effects with lines by just doing things like this. Because if you see down here, it almost looks like I've got, you know, a white overlay on it, and I don't. That's just a different line width. It's not as thick, so it's not going to be as dark. There we go. So we do have a problem here with these outer bits. So what I'm going to probably do, because I don't want to fully get rid of them, so I'm going to make a copy and then delete all these other ones. So this way I have a actual physical backup in case I don't like how this goes. And then I'm going to erase these in this other one. We'll see what that does. Okay. 
So I'm cutting these in half to take away their presence more, similar to what I've done here. So far, that's what we got going on. Isn't that crazy? I'm even gonna pull back some more of this on the wing. Right there. There we go. And a little bit more along this hair. Yeah, there we go. Aw, oh, night, Paladin. Thanks for joining for a bit. Have a good sleep. I know, right? Paladin, the great fluffy toy. I'd love to do that. I gotta find somebody who does uh, plushies. Really, I do. That's <laughs> silly drop. <laughs> oh, good. That's great. Bottom of that cider sour. Alright. So we got that. We got. Okay, so. I've run into a bit of a problem. But nothing I can't fix. So I'm gonna merge. this and duplicate this folder. save out this line file as a PSD. Alright. Go back over into Photoshop. Bring up the ink PSD. Bring this up. Transfer this over. a really nice clean line so happy about that there's this little chunk right here though I'd like to get rid of that because it's gonna be distracting when it's at a smaller size so that seems good also I'm gonna lower the B because there's some awkward touching in the small version at the top and now I'm pretty happy with this Preach, this is the exact same thing. So when I was doing um, UI for mobile games for 10 years, it's this stuff all the time. You have to have the not awkward touching stuff, you have to have buffer areas, you have to make sure text is readable. Um, typically you're not even supposed to have text for a good like icon. Text is usually a no-no um, because along with that there comes all these constraints and whatever. 
but sometimes, especially with emojis nowadays, you can't really avoid it, and sometimes it's actually helpful. So I'm kind of knowing the rules to break them, so to speak. But yeah, same thing. Same damn thing. So I'm gonna have to actually make the B be dark gray to actually gonna be interesting actually because of the dark mode don't forget about dark mode okay let's do this real quick get that in there so these are gonna be white It's gonna have to be dark mean hemlock actually they're at least seeing three sizes because we have to make three sizes of, of emojis for twitch so all the emojis you see with twitch everybody's provided three sizes for because depending on if they're on mobile if they're on a uh, older device if they're on a device that has um, like a retina resolution that's all going to affect the sizing and when something goes down to like 28 pixels or smaller, it's gonna start distorting. And so you have to treat the ones at 28 pixels different than you would at the, you know, 256 or the 512, right? Those are gonna be completely different. In a lot of cases, if you have anything that's kind of auxiliary, like a, a drop shadow or an outer glow, usually for the ones that are smaller, you're gonna have to omit that altogether because some people won't even be able to read it. So when you do see emojis on like a phone, the most they'll have is usually uh, a stroke around them. And even that sometimes can get super dicey. So it gets crazy. That's for sure. It's not an easy thing. And I'm going to finish probably the rest of these off stream because some of this here is going to be tough, and I'm going to need a lot of trial and error, um, especially for this yellow, because he's going to be colored on the inside, too, I think. Maybe I'll just end up liking this line art. But this is on the dark mode background, for those that have dark mode, so that's another hard thing. Um, making sure you have emojis that read well on dark mode and light mode. So obviously you can't use anything black because on dark mode, if it's a ping, it's going to get lost. So you either have to put it on a background or make sure you don't have anything that's black. Because this is dark mode and this is light mode. So I'm going to have to make it look good on both. Um, which can be kind of a, a hard challenge, honestly. I'm going to copy this color. And I'm gonna make it darker. Maybe I'll get a little bit more orangey. Let me see. Do here. It's okay. Doing your size. You okay? Yeah, I'm stretching. Stretching. I mean, the emojis on your phone, too, are way different than Twitch emojis. Twitch has a lot more leeway than those do. Um, doing, like, emojis for phones is really hard. You really can't do much, if anything, with them, honestly. Oh, he looks like a taco. Taco bee. Just do this for 
a moment. Do that. See it? And for those of you who are new to my stream, I'm usually 99% of the time doing traditional. <laughs> Today is a different kind of day. Thanks, Screech. don't opt for soft edges with emojis because then it's really hard to read them but in this case it might be okay but I'd rather have something clean. The problem is if you've got something that's very soft edge there's a lot that can go wrong with that as it's reducing. It can get really blurry, really weird, all that sort of thing. So typically I don't like to use it but we'll see. Rachelle, what's up? Rachelle, Rachel, thank you for your order, by the way. Oh, you bought the book? I think it was Rachel. Good job. You'll like it. It's cute. Gabe did a good job. Is that apartment? No. Oh, they hung up. <laughs> oh. Bastards. She wants to know what plate is. Oh, it's uh, it's just like an ATC, basically. It'll just be something that I, uh, it's like an it's an ATC, if you don't a, know a sketch what an card. ATC is, Sorry, it's, it's like a, a two by three original. Yeah, it's just a, a little sketch card, um, and I'll just draw a random little dude. Um, so you get an original with the book. Yeah. Which uh, people who order it or get it later will not get that. Yeah. So it is definitely an exclusive. Well, no, 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 no. The uh, I'll always have that available for someone to purchase, but that price will be going up. But yeah. you also get a free print. Oh, that's right, the free print. Yeah. Let's see. Actually, I'm gonna change the word. 
for you. Know. Yeah, make it so it's not confusing. Maybe don't use the word plate, because honestly, I didn't know what it was when he first told me either. I was like, what yeah. is that? I think it's, just, it's more of a thing that like, is more in like art books and comics, I think. With plates? Yeah, or really old. It, I think it's just an older thing that uh, novelists used to use. Because they basically just sign up a plate and instead of uh, uh, signing all the books, they would just, like, the, the publisher would send them, like, a stack of cards and then they would just sign the cards and then they'd throw them in. Well, if you want it, let Gabe know. You could always just PayPal him the remainder and he can always just make a note and do that for you. Yeah, totally. Because what, it was only 10 bucks extra? It's like an you? extra 15. 15? Okay, uh, so that works well on the black, on the white, mm, gets kind of lost. So I might have to actually put a black stroke around the whole thing. Which I hate doing, but with how Twitch is with the dark and light mode, it's almost unavoidable. Sad Creech. You got you got bandoozled. Bandoozled. Bandangled. That's awful. I'd be pissed. You should have wrote the company, bro. Do you ever go to Fairy Con though? You probably do well there. People go uh, crazy at that con for like um, puppets and stuff, dude. I mean, the whole theme this year is Dark Crystal, for God's sake. excited am I for Fairy Con? I'm pretty damn excited. I've been uh, pining to go there for a while. Um, it was pretty cool though because I had randomly gotten an email from them that was like, you know, just I was on their mailing list and I was like, oh yeah, right, Fairy Con. Uh, I should apply to that just in case. Because at Heroes Con, Corey Godby had said, we had talked for a while, and he had said, oh yeah, I'll put in a word for you for Fairy Con because you should really be there with your setup and everything. I was like, yeah, that'd be really nice, thank you. So I didn't know if he did it or not. Um, I don't think he did, but that didn't, you know, that was part of the reason I was like, well, I should probably apply anyway. So I did, and then two days later, um, I got a call where they were basically saying, you know, you need to be here. Uh, because of your content, you know, who you are and stuff. And I was like, well, that's awesome. Thank you. Um, where apparently the tables have been sold out since last December. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if that means I was technically half invited. <laughs> um, so it's not like I'm a guest or nothing like that. Um, but 
it was just really cool because that was one of the places I was like, you know, I should really be there someday, you know, with all of what I am. So I always dress up like an elf at cons to kind of stand out. And I've got, you know, obviously this whole mythos that I try to keep up with on my Twitch and everything. So I was like, it'd be cool to actually go and be part of that community. So I'm super psyched. They also put me with a lady who makes really, really cute stuffed cats, I guess? They're like really cute plushy kind of ragdoll looking stuffed toys, but they're really well made. You know, and they're just so cute. Oh, you don't travel much? I got you, Creech. Thank you, Katie. Yeah, I'm super psyched about that. Um, I was really looking forward to having November and December off from cons, but this was the one where I was like, okay, I'll break that for this. So November, Fairy Con will be my last con of the year. So. Oh, that's crazy, Creech. With the trading card thing. That's nuts. Okay, so just so you guys know, I don't know why the color on this on uh, OBS is so crazy. I'll try to show you real quick with a adjustment layer how it's actually supposed to look it's just so weird it's so off so on my computer it looks more like I wonder if I can even do it really it looks more like this where it's a deeper yellow that sort of thing but yeah on here oh my god Gabe this is so weird so this is how it looks on my computer mm -hmm. in OBS it's doing this right are you doing CMYK? No. That has nothing to do with it. This is my... So, uh, it's recording my display. There's no filters or anything on the display capture. That's really weird. It's just messing it up. Huh. Yeah, sorry. It, it looks like super crap on the thing. But yeah, that's what that looks like. The subshrub is this color. So, it looks better, believe me. Alright. So... I think I'm going to go. I'm going to start packing up. Does anybody have any questions? I think... Oh my god, is this the last stream? Yeah. Okay, so this is my last stream until we get back from New York Comic Con. So no streams next week for Gabe or I. Um, we'll be back probably... We'll try to stream on Monday. Uh, the 8th of October. Um... Don't count on that, though. We'll let you know on our Insta stories. Be sure to follow us on Instagram. Um, yeah, Creech, right? I don't know where they are either. And it's only for the display capture. Like, my traditional camera? It's fine. I don't understand. I should have just put my camera up to my Cintiq. Hmm. You did, Hemlock. Thank you so much for being here for it. Um, does anybody have any icon, emoji, questions, anything like that? Oh, Katie, you're welcome. Thank you for thanking us. And thank you, May Fox. Yeah, he'll end up being kind of cute. I'll really try to get these at least uh, in the, the realm of getting approved by Twitch. Uh, so at least by the time we get back, I'll have them. That'd be super dope. Because for um, people that sub at different tiers, yeah, you get the emojis, uh, but we're going to actually have, like, originals you're technically buying from us over time. So, uh, like, if you sub for a year, you get, um, like, a small original of your choice, whatever you want. It's basically a free commission, but depending on what tier you're on, it's going to be a different size. So like um, five dollar tier, the first tier is a ATC size, and then the next one up is like five by seven, and then the next sub is uh, seven by ten. So if you're subbing anyway, at least you're getting something extra out of it, you know. So we, because we wanted that, we didn't want anything. I don't know. Something about just subbing for emojis seems strange to me. I don't know. You have a sweater question. Oh, this is actually a poncho. 
<laughs> I'm wearing a poncho, and I think I got this one in England, <laughs> which probably doesn't help. <laughs> but it is a poncho. Oh, yeah. That's why I'm like Batman. Where was that? That was a. It was at like a, a consignment thing. I'm actually wearing a shirt that says Taco Cat backwards. It's Taco Cat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but really. Um, Creech, just go to any, like, secondhand thrift store sort of thing. There are tons and tons of really soft, broken-in sweaters that people have donated. And, like, that's the best place to find them. Because if you go to even a brand new department store or something, you're going to have to break it in. And that takes a lot of effort. You know, it takes maybe a whole winter of wearing a sweater constantly to get it really soft. I mean, this is really soft and really nice, and I think someone really loved it before me. So, I highly suggest doing that. That 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 way will be, at least it'll be soft, it'll be broken in, it won't be rigid. Because that's my problem with sweaters, usually they're super rigid. Like, I don't know. Um, you can pull off long ears. It's easy. <laughs> you just tug on your ears a little bit for a couple years, you'll be fine. It'll grow out. <laughs> um, Oh, there you go then. I believe you. That's so weird. If you're... Maybe it just here has a lot more... We're in the Midwest. So a lot of things we see at thrift stores is just... A lot of grandmas. A lot of grandma and winter wear. People are always swapping their winter wear. So, you know, Wisconsin, Minnesota area, you're probably going to get the best sweaters. <laughs> I think or honestly, probably Canada. You probably need to go to... Um, doesn't seem more like aff more affluent areas, or even like get away from s some major cities. Like if you can go into a smaller neighborhood that mm -hmm. is not surrounded by big cities, I think more people give away nicer things. Yeah. Honestly, I don't know. I really lucked out with this. Mm -hmm. I'll be completely honest. <laughs> but anyway, uh, a reminder that we have a donation bar at the bottom. It's just for uh, straight up donations, it's not including bits. And it's for a stream we're eventually gonna do where Gabe's gonna dress up like Elsa from Frozen and I'll pick one of the really ugly characters and we're just gonna sit and watch Frozen eat some food that's themed and we're just gonna like critique it because we've never seen it before. Never ever, I swear to God, neither of us have seen it. We're like the last humans who have. So if anybody wants to see us get to that point, Feel free to donate. <laughs> it should be fun. There's probably going to be a lot of swearing and insults, so if you like the movie, maybe it's not the best idea to watch. <laughs> but we're probably going to, I don't know, it's like Mystery Science Theater, but more vulgar. <laughs> by a good amount. <laughs> but yeah. Oh, that's weird, Peach. Yeah. Trench coats. Yeah, we do have trench coats, but I always wonder about how they got there and who had them. I can I be the moose? Sure, if I can find the moose thing. Aren't there like trolls or something too? I don't know. I was thinking the snowman, the... Wait, isn't it a reindeer? Reindeer? I don't know. I don't know. I'll look up what costumes I can find and pick the ugliest one. <laughs> so that's part of the 200 really, is buying the costumes and actually buying the movie. So don't worry though, we'll go to like half price books and get it for like two bucks. It's not a big deal. Okay. Thank you, Creech. We'll definitely let you know. So that's another thing. I'm going to try really, really hard to document our entire New York Comic Con, at least, journey and setup in the beginning. I'll try to do like recaps of every day, but we'll see how that goes. But um, that'll be on Instagram. So make sure to follow Cloverkin on Instagram. Um, Gabe might do it. I don't know though. But, um, okay, and that's it. Awesome! Thank you guys so much for coming. I hope this at least enlightened you to what's possible with some iconography, iconography, <laughs> iconography, <laughs> iconography, emojis, stuff like that. This is the biggest tip I can give you is having the smaller window by going to window, arrange, new window and make that one small so you know what effect every stroke that you do has. Very important for reduced um, icons and things of any size. And then depending on whatever sizes you have it at, 
The very smallest ones are most likely going to need special treatment because they're so small you're going to need to outline certain things, stuff gets lost, they're going to need special treatment. So just keep that in mind. But thank you guys so much. We'll be back on October 8th, hopefully. All right? And we'll see you then. Bye!